Alright, well, I'm going to make a lathe uh, lubrication video here for the uh, Shenhui here. Um, I already jumped ahead of it and I didn't think to make a video here about it, but um, what I did do already was to um, uh, clean and uh, prepare the little plugs that are uh, inside of the saddle here that you uh, pump full of grease. And we'll pick the camera up and uh, give you a look at them. They're uh, right here. Right here. There's one right here. Didn't clean very well. And there's another one right there. And uh, I'm just going to go through the process here of uh, filling up our oil and the gearbox oil for the saddle, oil for the crossfeed, oil for the apron shaft right here. We're going to go ahead and oil the lead screw. I jumped ahead and I oiled those bearings already. Um, we're going to clean it up and uh, add some oil over here to the ways. Also going to add just a little bit of oil to the headstock as well as my uh, transfer gearing here. Stay tuned. Yeah, right now I'm just uh, using the RNO anti wear hydraulic oil for pretty much uh, most of the, the general uh, lubrication in the uh, lathe right now. Um, you could go with something a little bit thicker, but uh, this stuff uh, seems to flow pretty well and it doesn't really um, uh, gum up uh, at all. Uh, been using it for a while and the uh, Shemai seems to like it. Uh, so we'll uh, go ahead and load it up and uh, get her pumping. I like to use, uh, I found this on eBay, it was relatively inexpensive. Came from our uh, guys over there in the UK. Um, it is a silver line oil can. I uh, found it on eBay. It's got a nice flexible hose on it. You can get and bend it. And um, it'll still pump even if you're out of angle and stuff, which is kind of nice where some of the other pumps don't work as well. But um, I got this loaded up with some of this already, and we're going to go. It's pretty important that you uh, wipe off any of the plugs before you open them up so you don't add contaminants to your process. I oil this up pretty much every time that I use it. I can't think of a time that I really don't. Um, most of the time it just takes a few pumps for me to fill this up. And uh, can't go up there. It's not going to hurt if you overfill, but uh, this particular one, um, it likes to uh, just a little bit drips out at a time. And um, I don't know if it's because there's something blocked way inside of there, I haven't had it apart. But Okay, our headstock is full again. Um, yeah, you want relatively light oils in your spindles, um, especially if you're running at high speeds. If you're running at low speeds, you can get away with a little bit thicker concentration or a bit thicker oils. Um, I don't know if I'd want to go any thicker than 30 weight, but some people um, uh, don't have whatever, and I say put whatever you got in it. Some oil is better than no oil. And if you want your tools to last uh, any length of time, you're for sure going to want to grease them up and oil them up at regular intervals. I try not to put too much oil on the gearing. 
a few drops because otherwise it just makes a mess and slings all over the place. Um, we're going to go ahead, open up our apron here as soon as I get all the crud off of it. And as you can see, this uh, lathe is no testament to cleanliness. Um, unfortunately, I worked too much with it in order to clean it up after every single part I make. And kind of a mistake on my part. I should take better care of it. But the uh, world goes round whether this thing's maintained or not. I take care of it. Weekly, I would say. Might be very weekly by some standards, but I pump it all up uh, once a week for sure. And today's just the day because I gotta use it. The only thing we gotta do here is clean off these little ports for the uh, cross feed. Pump those up nice. Take a stack and too much stuff on top of my gear cover and on top of my surface plates as well. But get wrapped up in making stuff rather than cleaning, and here we go. Okay, here's another um, can that I also have the same fluid in. Um, generally speaking, if I'm going to go on back gear, I'll give it a couple little drops. Then I will uh, point out for the Shenwa lovers here. Um, those two little Allen screws right here and there, it's pretty poor lighting, but uh, those, uh, you'll see one here and one there. Uh, you take the center one out and uh, you can lubricate the, uh, the bearing inside of there. So uh, when you're actually in um, back gear, uh, that uh, bearing will get lubricated. Seems kind of redundant, but uh, just trying to show all the stuff that I'm going to end up doing here. Um, I'm going to take that screw out and um, tap a little bit more after I get that thing out. It's a uh, four millimeter hex socket head, which just happens to coincide with the, uh, the tool post. Uh, I got clone uh, AXA uh, from Shars on this one. Uh, it seems to be a really nice post, uh, but uh, there it is, four millimeter. We're okay, gonna go ahead and just put just a couple of drops. There we go. Just a couple of drips. Sunday. Thank you. And we're gonna put the set screw back in. It's filled up. You don't really tighten the set screw up all the way because if you do, you're gonna score your bearing. And uh, that's pretty much universal for uh, all the lathes here. Um, position. And uh, it's good to lubricate, but at the same time, you gotta know about those set screws. If you uh, tighten them down too much, you will score the, the bearing or the shaft, the, the spindle on the inside of it, and you want to avoid that. You just want them uh, in there, but you don't want them contacting anything. And uh, if you have any uh, thoughts as to if you may be contacting something, uh, disengage the drive and try and spin the chuck. If the chuck spins and you don't hear anything or feel anything, the chances are you aren't nicking the spindle or the bearing. So close that back up and uh, basically that's a uh, uh, we've got some neodymium magnets right here on the side of the tailstock to uh, hold my 4 millimeter, and uh, I'm ready. I'm going to machine or remachine 
a uh, stud that comes all the way from Germany and uh, of course they want a billion dollars for it or whatever so uh, I got a plan uh, rather than uh, have it a uh, big uh, M16 thread that are completely destroyed I'm going to turn it down to half inch 13 and uh, provide a shoulder nut for them so they can uh, keep working um, but anyways uh, this is one of those things that uh, they want quick so um, I don't know if I'm going to film it or not so I'm just going to punch it out but uh, thanks for watching.